uh, today, you whether you're a father or you're not a father or you're celebrating or you're not celebrating, uh, today you're going to get a real good treat because today's practice is all about self-massage. And I don't know how many of you have had massages in the past or certainly not during pandemic time, but you're going to learn today how to massage parts of your body that perhaps have gotten stiff through the for whatever reasons, and you're going to end up with some tools that you're going to know how to massage your body in ways that are really going to be extraordinarily valuable to you. So we're going to start off with making sure you have the right uh, props, and what you're going to need is you're going to need, I'm going to change this view a little bit for myself. Hold on a second, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you're going to need is um, a top or that's going to be reasonably form-fitting. So if you have loose clothing and that's the only thing you have, you might at one point have to pull up the clothing to make rooms for the balls to get either directly onto the skin or, uh, or if you're wearing nice tight clothing, through the skin, uh, through the uh, clothing will be just fine. That would be perfect. So you're going to need two balls. Uh, I, I like these yoga tune-up balls you know, that I've been talking about for the last month or so. If you don't have yoga tune-up balls, that's okay. You can use tennis balls. Uh, you can use any kind of small ball that's going to be able to uh, get in and massage uh, the areas that we're going to be working with. I even tried using a baseball at one point. Uh, and, it, and it worked. It worked pretty well, except that it was so hard that it, it, was, it was a little bit too painful in certain parts of my body. I even tried at one point uh, using a golf ball, uh, a couple of golf balls, which can work as well. But once again, they're hard. And when you talk about a hard ball, trying to work on skin and, and kind of penetrate down through the layers of the skin... Uh, a hard ball might not be the most appropriate thing to, uh, to have. So all the practice today is going to be, you're going to be laying down on your mat. 99% of the practice is going to be um, where you're going to be on your back. And at one point, you're going to be on your belly, but it's going to be for a very short period of time. And then you're going to go back onto your backs. We're going to, how the practice is going to be is we're going to start with the muscles that we paddlers use a lot called the rotator cuff muscles. And we're going to massage into the rotator cuff muscles. Then we're going to work on the thoracic spine. Then we're going to go back into the cervical spine to complete the practice. And by that time, you should be sound asleep because you'll be so relaxed. Um, and because of the fact that you're going to be laying down, I'm not going to be doing the practice with you. I'm going to be talking my way through the practice because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see me anyhow if I'm laying down and you're laying down. So I want to make sure that you're understanding what, um, what when I'm talking about certain areas. Why we're doing this practice today, why we're doing the, the ball practice is because you have these layers of skin, and under the skin you have fascia, and under the, under the fascia you have connective tissue, and then you have muscles and bones and ligaments and tendons and all that sort of stuff. And we get stiff for a variety of reasons. Maybe we've overused a muscle, or maybe we've underused a muscle. Or maybe muscles have gotten shorter, or maybe muscles have gotten weaker, or maybe you have some arthritis kicking in. But what we're working on today is working on the fascia. And uh, many people don't quite understand what fascia is. Fascia is, is like a network. Picture um, like Spider-Man, for example, and you see that he's, he's got the Spider-Man costume on. Uh, and, or like a spider web. And this fascia, this web, is under our skin and it covers everything in our entire body. If we didn't have fascia and it was just gone, our bodies would just collapse. It would be just, we wouldn't be able to stand up. So the fascia has to be strong 
but at the same time, it can't get all stiff. So what we're going to be working on today is being able to loosen the fascia so the muscles can do what the muscles are supposed to do um, to move the bones around, to move our bodies around, so that you can then start to have a real relaxation in your body. And how often should you give yourself self-massage? How about every day in some part of the body or another? I thought that I'd be able to work on the lumbar spine today as well, but after I timed the whole thing, it just seemed to be uh, I would have to rush too much. So today we're going to work on the rotator cuff, thoracic spine, cervical spine, and that's really about it. Um, I want to go over a few things so that when I'm talking about them you're, and you're laying on your back, you know that what, what I'm talking about. So if you're using, you're going to be having the balls, and the, we're going to start off by working on a muscle up here called the supraspinatus, and you're going to have one ball on one side and one ball on the other side. The supraspinatus is one of the rotator cuff muscles that's responsible for when your arms are going up like this in jumping jacks, or if you're paddling, when your arms are going up like this, the supraspinatus is the muscle that's doing the work. And we're going to be working on that. At some point, not just for here, but for other parts as well, I'm going to ask you to chug. And when I'm talking about chugging, I'm, I'm going across the grain of a muscle. So it'll be going where the, your body will be making the ball go back and forth, back and forth. And at one other point, I'm going to ask you to glide. And glide is where you want the balls going back and forth. And how you're going to glide is you're going to move your body from side to side. And then the balls will be rolling from side to side. When we roll over onto our bellies, I'm going to have you go after a muscle that's just underneath your uh, collarbone. Uh, it's the subclavi subclavius muscle. So I'm going to say, put the ball under your collarbone. It's not under, but it's just like just a little bit below your collarbone. And once again, you're going to be rolling back and forth under the collarbone, and you're going to be chugging. I'm also from time to time going to ask you to make some phantom arm movements. So you may be laying on your back, and I'm going to have you make arm movements in ways that contract the muscles and then the balls are doing its work because you're contracting muscles. At another point, and when you're laying on your back, I'm going to ask you to bring your arms out, pull into the side, and then at shoulder height, I'm going to ask you to bend your arms like so. You're, and now you're laying on your back. I'm going to you're going to have internal and external rotation of your shoulders. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, when you have the uh, balls at one point, you're going to have them on your shoulder blades. So you really want to know where your shoulder blades are. So reach around with one hand or both hands and see if you can grab a hold of this bone that's back here. This is the uh, part of your shoulder blade. And, and at one point when we're working on the infraspinatus in this uh, terrace minor, you're going to have the ball right on the shoulder blade. And it's going to be a little sensitive for some of you because it's a thin muscle that lays right on the shoulder blade. And the last thing I want to say is that uh, you can, if you find that you, you, the balls are in the wrong position, you can always readjust the balls. Where are they supposed to be? Everybody has the same amount of vertebra from their skull all the way down to your tailbone. And the vertebra are usually about an inch, inch and a half apart. So when I say roll the balls down an inch or an inch and a half, it's really a very small amount of distance that you're, that you're traveling. Um, and then at one point, I'm going to say the balls right now should be right about in the middle, halfway between the top of your shoulder blades and the bottom of your shoulder blades, somewhere in the middle. And almost always, people have gone down too far. 
So if you're not in the middle, when I say you should be in the middle of the center part of your scapulas, your shoulder blades, at that point, you can just readjust, just move the balls wherever they want to move them to. When you're on your belly, for that very short period of time that it can be on your belly, I'm going to have your arms go back up to the sky, like so, you're laying on your belly, and I'm going to have you move your arms around like so, and see if there's anything else. No, that's about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and, and then, <laughs> sorry, at one other point, you'll be laying on your back and your arms will be in a, uh, straight out going towards the sky. And I'm going to say to you, or just imagine that there's a puppeteer in the sky and your arms are like strings of a marionette's puppet or a puppeteer's marionette, marionette puppet. And I'm going to have you straighten your arms, relax your arms, straighten your arms, relax your arms. And what that's going to do is it's going to have your, your shoulder blades retract and protract and retract and protract. It's very relaxing feeling. You'll have the block at one point under your head, but we're going to start with the block under your tailbone. And when it's under your tailbone, you can either have it the flat way or a little bit higher or even a little bit higher, depending upon what your anatomy allows you to do. So start though without the block at all. Just have the block next to you and lay on your backs. And through the whole practice today, I want you to be doing abdominal thoracic breathing, yoga breathing. So as you inhale, Feel your belly swelling. Then the air rises up into your chest. Somebody's not on mute. Please take yourself, put yourself on mute, whoever was coughing. Thank you. Arms alongside of your body. Deep breathing, belly swells, then your chest swells. Be completely relaxed. Your knees are bent, feet flat on the mat. So we're going to start with the rotator cuff sequence to rub out the supraspinatus, which is that muscle that's, that I showed you before. So take both balls and put them in that area alongside of your neck and then lift up your pelvis. Now, you can lift up your pelvis without a block or you can lift up your pelvis with the block at any level that seems to work for you. The balls are separated. They're a few inches apart, one on one side of your neck and one, one on the other side of your neck. And you want to have enough pressure that it feels like, okay, the balls are kind of digging in a bit. Not painful, but just feeling okay. So you decide if you want your how how high you want your pelvis. Find the best angle to really melt that area. Now, Chuck, gently move the body up and down, just maybe a half an inch, just a little bit. Half an inch up, half an inch down. Keep on breathing. And now shimmy, move your rib cage and shoulders side to side. Your pelvis is still elevated, either elevated because you've lifted it up or it's resting on a block. Either way, it's just fine.
Now stick your arms up in the air and make some phantom arm movements. Just move your body, move your arms around in whatever way seems to be nice for you. You're using the balls to do self-massage right here. And now set your pelvis down. If you have a block, take the block out. We're going to use one ball now. And we're going to use it on the right-hand side for your infraspinatus and your teres minor. So place that one ball right under your right shoulder blade, right in the middle of that shoulder blade. And for many of you, this might be pretty uncomfortable. You're determining how much weight to put into the ball. The infraspinatus and the teres minor are the primary muscles for your external rotation of your shoulder. Lean towards your right, lean towards the right side of your body. And now you wanna massage the entire back of your shoulder blade. So let the ball chug up and down, shimmy, Glide side to side. Use some phantom arm movements. And make sure the ball is covering the entire surface of your right shoulder blade. That's where the teres minor and the infraspinatus muscles live. It might not even feel all that good right now. And if you don't feel anything, that mean, that tells me that maybe the ball isn't even on the shoulder blade at all. Maybe it's above it or below it or next to it. So make sure it's right on that bone. Shimmy side to side, chug. And now let's move the ball over to the left side, the left shoulder blade. So put it right under that left shoulder blade. Lean towards the left. And use your body to massage the entire back of the shoulder blade. Chug up and down. Notice what part of your shoulder blade you're resisting. I don't want to do it there. It doesn't feel very good. Well, that's really could be a good sign. If it's really tight, if it's really painful, so painful you just can't stand it, then move the ball around a little bit or put a little bit less pressure. But sometimes when a muscle is doesn't feel all that good, it might mean that it's asking for extra attention. Use your left arm as a make some phantom arm movements with your left arm now. Breathe, keep on breathing. Now take the ball out, roll over onto your belly. Now we're gonna work on the subclavius part. This is the only part of the practice that you're gonna be laying on your belly. You're gonna be using one ball and put it under your right clavicle. Have your right hand alongside of your body, maybe as if you were trying to do a push-up. And flap your elbow like a bird's wing. And now slide the ball from side to side. Might have to adjust. Bring your right hand down alongside of your right hip, right hand down with your pinky pointing to the sky. So turn your hand a little bit and lift your right arm up to the sky as much as it's willing to go and wiggle your body around a little bit too so that you're really letting the ball glide all the way from the middle of your body to from the sternum all the way out to the end of your clavicle. 
and do a little chugging at the same time. Chugging is for doing cross fiber. And when you're gliding, you're going along with the fibers. And now roll the ball way out to that junction between your chest and your armpit. That's the pectoralis minor. And the same thing there, make some phantom arm movements, flap your elbow like a bird's wing. If this is, if this is, if you're not getting enough pressure right here, you can lift your hips up. Put a little bit more weight into the ball. Take your right arm, twist it behind your back as if you, like, like you were being like somebody grabbed a hold of you and twisting your arm behind your back. Move your body that way. And now let's repeat exactly the same thing on the other side. So move the ball over to underneath your clavicle, subclavius muscle on the left side. Do the same thing, maybe you'll You'll have, as if you're doing a push-up, maybe flap your left elbow as if it was a bird's wing, chug a little bit, move from side to side, lift your hips if that would give you a little bit extra pressure into the ball. Let your arm, come, left arm come alongside of your left hip, pinky points to the sky. And then lift your arm up and down a few times. Make some phantom arm movements. Make sure that it's covered the entire region from your sternum all the way. And then get into that pec minor right there at the junction between your chest. Twist your arm behind your back and release, take the ball out, roll over onto your back, bend your knees, feet flat on the mat, arms alongside of your body. Lift your head and put it back down to the mat so your chin is not pointing to the sky. And just take a couple of deep abdominal thoracic breaths. We're now going to go into the thoracic spine sequence. So we're going to start with both balls, on this each one on each side of your neck, just like you did before when we were working with the rotator cuff. But now we're going to, it's going to be slightly different, just slightly different. One ball side of your neck and lift your hips up a little bit and breathe deeply. Using your feet and your legs, chug a little bit, just a little bit, going straight forward, straight back, straight forward, straight back. So the balls are kind of like just rocking. And I shimmy your ribs from side to side. And once again, you're determining how much weight to put on the balls by how high you lift your hips. Now reach your arms towards the sky, swaying from side to side as if your arms were seaweed on the bottom of the ocean. And now relax, set your pelvis back down. And now you're going to 
the balls are going to remain next to each other. So they're going to actually be touching each other. So before we had the balls apart, but now the balls are going to be next to each other, touching each other. And as we do this in series, as we work our way down from the thoracic one all the way down to thoracic 12, they're going to run down the sides of the spine. And the sides of the spine is called the lamina groove. It's sort of like a gutter running along the side of the spine. So you're going to reach back with one hand to, the, to your spine and feel a big bone of the spine sticking out. Sort of like a rhinoceros's horn. I mean, it's really a big, obvious stone back there. That's where the first and second thoracic vertebra are. And place the balls right at that spot, directly under that spot of the large bone. That's thoracic one. So you have both balls there. They're sitting side by side. They're touching each other. And clasp your hands behind your head. Lower your chin to your chest. And that's creating a major stress uh, it's, it's not stress, stretch, just cradling your head and neck. Now lift your pelvis up just slightly. Set your pelvis and head back down. And then nudge the balls down just a tiny amount. Remember, I talked about... Your vertebra are just about an inch, inch and a half away, uh, separate from each other. And sometimes vertebra get very locked in by the one at a time. And sometimes they're in clumps of vertebra that are not rotating as well as they could. Keep in mind that the spinal bones, the vertebra, yes, they move forward and back, but they also have a bit of rotation as well if you allow them to. You want to be pretty darn flexible in your back. Reach your arms all the way overhead behind you until your thumbs touch. If your thumbs, your thumbs are on the floor, if possible. If this is too difficult, open your arms to a Y shape. Slide your right arm down towards your right hip, turning your head to the right. Then scissor the arms, left arm sliding towards the left hip, turning your head to the left. With your thumb touching the ground. Go back and forth. Repeat going back and forth, turning your head in the direction of the arm that's going down towards the hip. Breathe. Slide one hand down. Slide the other hand up, sliding it along the floor as you're doing this and turning your head in the direction of the arm that's going down towards your hip. Breathe. Very slow movements, don't rush. Don't rush. Once or twice more on each side. Reposition the balls if you need to, if they're starting to separate. Remember, you want them right alongside the spine. For the next position, clasp your hands behind your head, cradling the back of your head, and chuck down another one, move the balls down just another inch, maybe inch and a half. And stay there and then tilt your body slowly 
from side to side, from right to left, sort of as if your body is like a canoe and the wind shifts you a little back and forth. The body tilts a little bit to the right, tilts a little bit to the left. Get that tilting. So it's not gliding, it's not sliding back and forth. Let your body tilt a little bit, like the canoe is tilting to the left and then tilting to the right. Now move the balls a little further down to another vertebra, lay on your back, head on the floor. Your arms are alongside of your hips and your palms face the sky. Breathe, make sure you're still doing nice, deep abdominal thoracic breathing. Try to keep your arms on the floor as much as possible. Inhale and skim your arms along the floor as much as, your po as possible for snow angels. And then back to your hips. Inhaling your arms nice and high. Exhaling, slide your arms back down towards your hips. Snow angel. Notice that maybe one shoulder moves better than the other. Just pay attention. Don't try to correct it. Just observe. Deep, deep breathing. Try to keep your hands in contact with the floor as much as you can. For some of you, that might be darn close to impossible. That's okay. Finish the one that you're doing right now. The balls are still together. And scoot down a little bit so that right now they are in the middle of your shoulder blades. That's where we were, I was talking about earlier. So they're halfway between the top of your shoulder blade and the bottom of your shoulder blade. Readjust the balls if you need to. And now reach your arms skyward as if there was a puppeteer in the sky holding onto your hands. Inhale, and the puppeteer pulls your arms even higher. Your scapulas are protracting. Exhale, your arms go a little slack, and the scapulas pinch the balls together. It's called retraction. Alternate, alternate, you know, the rhomboids are also contributing right in here. So inhaling and exhaling, your arms are going straight to the sky and then down. Nice, deep, deep breathing. Now reach your arms all the way around and give yourself a big hug. Try to find your own shoulder blades with your fingers, with your fingertips. So you're really squeezing, you give yourself this gigantic hug. Breathe really hard as if you're trying to crush the balls. And feel the back of your ribs as if you're flattening the balls. Keep breathing hard. And now start to squirm from side to side. And the balls are going to be moving all around those muscles. Squirm, squeeze. 
feeling your back muscles that you've never even felt before. You might even find some moaning and groaning. Now release, roll down another inch. Now picture in your mind what the scapulas, your shoulder blades look like. The, just below the lowest point of your scapula. So if you think of your scapula as sort of like a triangular shape, what's just going to be just a little bit below the lowest point? Abduct your arms wide, straight out to the side. Pause and just breathe. Feel the wonderful pressure the balls are giving you this area. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> it's for some it is. Just lay still. Notice that they're creating a baby back bend, a little bit of an extension here. Hips are down. Sometimes there's a rigidity in some areas of the spine. The balls are moving bone by bone and giving the vertebra a chance for mobility. We want our back to be mobile. Now bend your arms at the elbow so your fingers point towards the sky. Inhale, lower your hand to the palm of your hand to the floor. Exhale and return the back of your hand to the floor as far back as it's willing to go. So you're doing internal and external rotation. Try to keep that right angle in your arm and try to have your shoulders straight out 90 degrees so that your elbows aren't going down towards your waist, but maybe straight out from your shoulders if you can. Notice that when you're going internal, external rotation, are your hands widening out? Can you keep that 90 degrees as much as you can? Couple more. And now roll the balls down another inch. For women, if you are wearing a bra, this is just where your psychic bra strap is, just below the lowest point of the scapulas of your shoulder blades. Clasp your hands behind your head. If this is too intense, just lay and breathe. Otherwise, inhale deeply and explode the ribs open and exhale, and the ribs close down and crunch up like you're doing a, a abdominal crunch. Inhale, lower your back down. Inhale, explode those ribs wide open. Exhale, crunch, and draw your abdominal muscles in at the same time. A few more times. Inhale, stretch those ribs out. Exhale, crunch up. Crunch your abdominal muscles as well. One more time. Really stretch, stretch, stretch. And finally, inhale, set your head back down and rest. Slide the balls down another inch. Straighten your left leg. Pull your right knee into your chest. Now bounce that knee into your chest. Bounce, 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 bounce. Relax the rest of your body. 
This is where the upper back reaches the lower back, the lumbar spine. Your whole body is being agitated. Bounce, 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 bounce. You might even find your head bouncing as well. You've grabbed a hold of your knee with your hands. So you're not, so you're really letting your arms and your legs bounce, 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 bounce. Not slow, but really give yourself some good agitation here. You don't have to be gentle here at all, but pull that knee into your, in towards your shoulder, bounce, 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 and now straighten your right leg out and repeat the same thing with your left leg. Grab a hold of your left knee, clasp your hands around, and bounce, 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 bounce. If you can't reach your knee, grab a hold of the back of your thigh. But you really want to have this nice bouncing feeling. Now reset your feet to the floor, remove the balls. Palms face up. Close your eyes. Notice how much of your spine is in contact with the floor. Notice how the tissues of the back are responding to the way you breathe. We hold so much tension from the muscles in our back without even realizing it. Take your block and put the block under your head. Bend your knees, feet flat on the floor. Just breathe. Abdominal, thoracic, breathing. Now take both balls, put them on the block, at the back of your neck, just below the skull. Very gently, nod your head, yes. Just gently, slowly, don't rush. And then instead of using your neck muscles for nodding, use your feet to push a little bit to allow your head to nod. Your feet are doing the work, and your head is just kind of going along with it. Slowly turn your head from side to side, saying no with your head. Gently, don't rush, don't rush. Turn it to the left. Back to center, turn to the right. Draw the infinity symbol with your nose.
Move both balls along the neck to the right side and turn your head a little bit to the right. And then with your head, nod yes and no a few times. So the ball is only on your right side of your neck, only on the right side. Drop your head, drop your head, weight, the weight of your head into the balls. So you're turning your head to the right, saying yes and no. Switch sides. Put the balls on the left side of your neck. Same thing. Some yeses and some noes. Take one ball away. You are only going to use one ball now. Just lay it down. Turn back over to the right side. And use your thumb to find the area just behind your ear lobe. It should be a pretty firm bone. So you're putting one ball behind your right ear. And then just make some, that's your sternomitocleidomastoid muscle. Um, just make some micro movements with your head. Yes and no. Let's go over to that same muscle on the left side. One ball under the left sternocleidomastoid muscle, right behind your left ear. Make some micro movements with your head, yeses, noes. That muscle, by the way, goes all the way down to your collarbone. Turn back over to the right side and place the ball on your jawbone. That's a clench and unclench your jaw under your cheekbone. Make some tiny movements of yeses and noes. Think where your jaw opens and closes, right alongside of your ear. Open your mouth, close your mouth. Open your mouth, close your mouth. That's your jawbone. Even clench your jaw. You can feel the pressure. Sometimes we clench our jaws when we're sleeping. Move your head into yeses and noes. Picture a fish and how a fish's mouth opens and closes gently. Do the same thing with your own self. Open and close your mouth a little bit. Notice how that's affecting the ball and that jaw area. Make sure you've rolled way over onto your right side. 
that you're not laying on your back, but you're laying on your right side. Little yeses and noes, opening, closing your mouth. Letting the ball run all the way along your jawline towards your chin. Feel how much tension you're holding in your jaw. That's a powerful muscle. It's a small muscle, but it is one of the most powerful muscles in your body. Let's roll over to the left side and do the same thing. So roll over onto your left side, put it under that area right where your jaw clamps, some yeses and some noes. Open and close your mouth like a fish. And finally, roll back onto your backs with your head on the block. Now here you have a choice. Either your head on the block, no balls, head on the block with balls, or not have your head on the block at all. What feels best for your neck? What's gonna be best for you? And then have your arms alongside of your body, palms face up. If you'd like, you could either have your legs stretched out in front of you in Shavasana, or you can have your legs bent, what's called Ardha Shavasana. Put one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. And as you inhale, feel your belly rising, and then your chest rises. When you exhale, it's in reverse. And when you've got this nice abdominal thoracic breath going to your satisfaction, and you've slowed it down, have your arms alongside of your body, palms face up, far enough away from your hips where your arms are not touching your hips. Notice if your head is relaxed. If you need to, lift up your head and then put it back down, only if you need to. Take the block away if you have the block under your head. Bring your knees in towards your chest and 
roll over to one side or the other. Put one hand under your head so as you sit up, you're supporting your neck as you sit up to a comfortable seated position. Eyes closed or open, whatever seems to work best for you. Let your belly expand. Bring your hands together at your heart. Nice deep breath in. Namaste. Thank you.